Welcome to the Pilates Show, where we explore Pilates tips and techniques to help deepen the skill level of the movement educator while having fun. Hi, I'm your host, Casey Marie Hurt, and today we're gonna be doing some uh, release relief on the reformer, part two here. So you already saw me do a little bit of release work uh, with the fit bar in my last segment that I did to open up the occipital region. And this next piece is gonna be really working on the posterior part of the shoulder, the tricep, which is a really good primer to do before you do something like arms, uh, any side, sort of arm work, arms and straps, four point kneeling, just to get these whole, all these fibers on this outer ridge line of the arm to start to open up. So many people find their posture from shoving their shoulders back and together and really tightening the back of the arm. But really we're meant to have lots and lots of range of motion from the outer ridge line of the shoulder blade all the way into the back line of the upper arm bone, the humerus. So this is really nice to do when uh, clients come in and uh, they just need a little bit of love before they get on the reformer or this is also really nice to do in a reformer class. So you always have your sitting box, you always have your reformer and I call it the oh my goodness moment where you kind of rest your head on your hand and you get the, the foot bar to really go right at that crevice where the, the shoulder blade meets the upper arm bone and you can find all sorts of interesting moments here. Now what I like to do is a little bit of a roll forward and a little bit of a roll back. And for me, the roll back is uh, much more vid vivid than the roll forward and it'll just depend on your client's tension here. Now, you don't have to hold on to the head. You can start there. But what I find is immensely helpful is that you find one of those tender spots. And we call it the eight or nine on the Richter scale from one to 10. You find that and then you can actually start to move the arm a little bit. You can bend the elbow. You can straighten the elbow. You can rotate the arm in and out. You can rotate the head and neck. Oh, feels so good. And you, what you start to find, especially when you start to add in a little bit of arm movement, we call it fascial flossing here, is that you start to really understand how the movement of the arm and the arrangement and the alignment of the arm absolutely informs the tissue of the shoulder, the torso, the ribs, and the spine, because you can feel these tender spots have lots of legs up and down. So this is an excellent thing to do before arm work. Also, by doing the right arm and then the left, you have your clients compare the tension between right and left so that they can start to understand what I call uh, almost their, their tension topography, how they're strung together. Do they have more tension on the left side than the right? Does it feel easier to internally rotate or externally rotate the right? This is gonna give them valuable information kinesthetically where they just feel it and don't rely on you telling them to go into all sorts of lovely shoulder girdle and arm work with that, those little tweaks that make all the difference in the world while building strength and mobility in the shoulder girdle. That's it for today. If you have a different take on today's subject or if there's anything you'd like to see covered in an upcoming episode, we'd love to hear from you. Comment below on Facebook, Twitter, or in the forum at fusionpilatesedu.com. See you next time and never stop learning.